If I had 10 seconds to make you better at Rocket League, the closest thing I could give to a cheat code would be my settings. This is my 10 step checklist to instantly improve your settings and play better for ranked purposes. Freestylers, you've been warned, this is not for you. If you're new here, my name's Luke. I'm a top 0.1% rated coach with over 6K combined hours, and I'm mainly known for running the Grand Champ Roadmap, where we take plat through champ ranked players up to Grand Champ in just six weeks flat. We currently have over 110 students that are actively training with our coaches, and so we only have capacity to take on 10 more. So just a heads up, once we enroll 10 more students, I'm gonna have to put things on pause until we can find, hire, and train one or two new coaches. So if you're plat, diamond, or champ watching and you want that GC title, DM my Discord with the keyword GC and we can talk details about coaching. My Discord will be first linked down below and let's talk settings. The first thing you want to do is bind power slide and joystick air roll to the same button. Power slide only happens on the ground and air roll only happens in the air. So since we only have so many buttons on our controller, we can free up some real estate and be more efficient by just binding them to the same button. One super important note though, you want to make sure you bind your joystick air roll to the same button as your power slide, not your directional air roll. For those of you who don't know, directional air roll, for example, air roll left or air roll right, is much different than joystick air roll, which is the sort of free air roll that you have to push down on your joystick to activate. But point is, if you get this right and you bind power slide and air roll to the same button, you're going to very smoothly be able to transition between air and ground. So make sure you bind power slide and air roll. That way you can power slide on every landing and have super smooth recoveries. Setting number two, move boost to the back of your controller. If you didn't yet know, the default controls in Rocket League are terrible. They are so bad. <laughs> the main reason the default controls in Rocket League suck are because one, you don't get a directional air roll, which we'll talk about in a second, and two, they cluster all of the most important buttons, like jump, boost, and power slide even, all around the same part of your controller. The reason this is so bad is because when you get to the high levels, you're going to need to be able to jump, boost, power slide, and even air roll right after another, if not all at the same time. And if you have all of these buttons clustered together in the same part of your controller, the only way you're going to be able to do it is by like fat fingering, which is obviously not accurate. Now, some pros who've been in the scene for a while have stuck to default controls and just gotten over it and learned the muscle memory. So to make this easier on yourself, my golden rule for control binds is literally just to move boost off of circle and Xbox players, whatever that button is, just <laughs> move it to the back of your controller as well. I put it on L2. You can just have a dedicated finger that's like your boost finger that always controls that button. And it's just going to make all your movements in game that much smoother and reduce human input error. Number three bind at least one directional air roll. For those of you who don't know, directional air roll just refers to air roll left or air roll right. Most pros still only use one primary air roll. In the same way that in most sports, you know, you're a righty or a lefty, you throw with your left hand or you throw with your right hand. It's the same in Rocket League. You really only need to be able to spin one way to get 90% of the efficiency and movement down in game. Two key things to understand here. Number one, you absolutely want at least one directional air roll. It doesn't matter whether it's air roll left or whether it's air roll right. Me personally, I use air roll left and most people do the same, but you should have at least one because directional air roll doesn't require you to push down your joystick to move like, you know, normal air roll does. And so it just requires less buttons to use and frees up your joystick while you're in the air. This is what enables you to tornado spin and do a lot of other complicated adjustments quickly in the air. But at base level, you should absolutely have one bound. That way you can develop that muscle memory over time. 
Second thing you need to understand is you don't necessarily need both directional air rolls. Like we talked about, you can get 90% of the results from just knowing a single air roll bind. And in most situations, that will have you covered. Now, that being said, some pros, especially the younger and super mechanical ones right now, they're picking up two directional air rolls. And so some people are starting to think it's becoming more necessary. But as far as I can tell, for the average player, for 99.9% .9 of you watching, you don't need both air rolls. I would save learning your second until you're honestly SSL or about to go pro. Number four, max your nameplate scale. For those of you who don't know, nameplate scale is one of the most recent settings added to Rocket League. And by recent, I mean like four years ago, but in Rocket League terms, that's pretty good. And what nameplate scale controls is the actual size of the player tags that you see live in game. The reason you want to max your nameplate scale is really just for tracking purposes. Especially when you're looking far downfield or far across the field, having nameplate scale on the max setting is going to allow you to more quickly identify how far away a player is and of course what team they're on. So especially if you're below GC and you'd like to be able to see your teammates before they cut you off and steal the ball, max your nameplate scale for the best results in ranked. Number five, turn off V-Sync and turn on full screen. V-Sync and full screen are two of the most important settings that can positively or negatively affect your input lag. If you don't know, input lag refers to the delay between when you press an input on your controller or keyboard and the time it takes for the game to actually register that movement and for it to happen in real time. For competitive purposes, less input lag is of course better. And if you have V-Sync on or full screen off, these are both going to spike your input lag and make you play slower. If you've ever felt like your car was heavy or just your movement is slow, it probably has to do with input lag. So check these two settings, make sure you're set on full screen and V-Sync off, and that way you'll play the fastest in game. Number six, increase your FPS to 240 hertz. Rocket League might not be pay to win like some other games, but unfortunately, PC is absolutely better than console. The main reason PC is better than console, aside from Bacchus mod and workshop maps and plugins that I know console players, I hope you'll have soon one day. The even bigger reason PC is better is because of FPS. In a game like Rocket League, because input delay is so important, having higher FPS and having higher refresh rates is absolutely game changing, especially when you get to the higher ranks where games can be decided on split second differences. This is why if you ever watch pro play, they're almost always playing on minimum 240 hertz monitors. And so of course, this goes without saying, only if you can't afford it, it's definitely going to be worth it to make the jump. I remember when I first switched from 60 to 144 hertz, it was genuinely a night and day difference. If I had to guess, playing at 60 FPS for me would probably be the equivalent of dropping down from GC3 to GC1 skill level. At least at the high, high ranks, performance is that important. So if you can, set your refresh rate to the maximum possible. 240 or 360 is best, but even 144 hertz is going to give you a significant advantage on anyone at 60 FPS. Number seven, change your sensitivity. While yes, it's true that many pros favor a higher sensitivity and can actually control the super high jittery sensitivities. What I've seen from coaching and my own personal experience is that the benefit of a lower sensitivity is it's more controlled. Point is, if you're lower ranked watching, I recommend you start out in the lower ranges of sensitivity and only move up closer to what the pros are using as you improve your car control and rank up over time. A good starting point I found is anywhere between 1.0 and 1.4 on your ground and aerial sensitivity. And as you improve, you can move up into the higher ranges, anywhere from 1.4 to 2.0. Me personally, I now use 2.0 for ground and steering sensitivity, but that's because I use Rizzo's controls and I actually have to use my joystick to drive instead of having accelerate and decelerate button. This was my number one regret and it's absolutely worse 
worse and harder to control than just using accelerate and decelerate. I don't recommend you copy me on this, but what I can recommend is increasing your sensitivity slowly over time until you find a good balance between speed and actual control. If you get this right, you'll be able to move both quickly and consistently, and you need both to rank up. Number eight, copy pro camera settings, but don't copy pros controller settings. Almost all pros fall in a super tiny range and basically the meta range for camera settings are cracked. What you absolutely shouldn't do and what I see a lot of new players falling trapped to is copying pro controller settings. You see, the problem with copying pro controller settings and keybinds especially is most pros have anywhere from 6,000 to, I mean, these days, upwards of 12, 15, even 20,000 hours in game. And since pros have been in the game so long, many of them have gotten comfortable with using, let's just say, less than optimal settings. And point is, they're not the best to copy. If you want a great baseline controller and camera setup, I highly recommend checking out AppJack's tutorial that display his settings because I can absolutely vouch for his. So to be safe, you can copy most pro camera settings, but don't copy most pro controller settings. Number nine, and this is probably the most important on the list. If you want to rank up, don't forget to hit the subscribe setting. No, actually, if you do want to rank up and you want the best setting outside of Rocket League, I run Rocket League's largest free improvement Discord with almost 50,000 players at the time I'm recording this, with tons of training packs, resources on improvement, and just straight up players to queue with and climb together. So shamelessly, my Discord will be first link below, but genuinely, it's completely free to join and you can always leave whenever you want. So give it a shot if you want. Lastly, number 10, I want you to turn every video setting except transparent goalposts off into performance. In some games, you can get away with having higher graphics if your computer can run it. But in Rocket League, I haven't met a single pro who plays with anything other than the lowest graphics. The reason is not just for performance, but also because most cosmetic settings will blur the field or make it harder to read the play. With how important reading the ball and predicting the future path and bounce of the ball is in Rocket League, any setting that messes with the lighting or shadows is an absolute must avoid. So if you wanna rank up, the only setting you're allowed to have on high is render quality. This will make sure the pixels on your screen are sharp, but apart from that, turn every video setting to performance and only keep transparent goalposts on because this will allow you to see outside of your net when you inevitably don't go back post. Okay, that was my quick and shortened settings checklist, but if you want a complete list of my settings with explanations, definitely check out the video on screen here. This is my newest and most up-to-date guide that covers everything. Or if you have specific questions, of course, DM me on Discord and we can talk details about coaching or anything else. Otherwise, I'll see you in the video here and thanks for watching.